This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, tradition. What's going on guys? Thanks for stopping by the AK HVAC YouTube channel. Today we're gonna talk about a vacuum pump with an extreme size. No, it's not that big white one behind me. It's on the other end of the spectrum. Today we're gonna talk about this, a 2CFM battery operated vacuum pump. Is it a gimmick? Is it a toy? Or is it a game changer? Let's talk about it. All right, all right. Thanks so much again for tuning in today. And as always, if you guys enjoy the content, please consider hitting that subscribe button and tapping that bell icon for notifications as new content drops. If you mess around on Instagram, go ahead and follow me at AKHVAC on there as well. I post lots of photos of my day to day. Now on to the video. A few days ago, I did a split system change out. It was a we put in a four ton York straight AC inch and an eighth line sets for a factory that made sunroofs for vehicles. Enough of me trying to make it look cool. Anyway, vacuum pumps have always been one of those really annoying things to have to grab and haul around when you're doing jobs in the HVAC world, whether it's roping it up onto a roof, lugging it across a roof, recovering and evacuation can be annoying and frustrating in commercial environments, particularly because of the fact that there's so many times where we don't have accessible power. This usually leads to us doing questionable things, running multiple extension cords, causing voltage drops that go against the manufacturer's specs, as well as doing things like using the widow cords uh, and tapping into God knows what, 480 off uh, random equipment and uh, just create all kinds of scenarios that are unsafe and not healthy for the equipment itself. I know I've always thought of a day that maybe we'd have these things run on a battery, but I didn't think it'd be in my career or something that was reasonable or cost effective. But as of 2019, the opportunity will be there to pick up this, the new NAVAC NP2DLM. It is a 2CFM battery operated vacuum pump. It runs on 18 volt batteries and they are branded as Navac batteries. I don't know who actually makes them. If I had to take a stab at it based off the sound that you get when you plug into the charger, I would go with Makita. You've got battery here, you've got an oil fill port, you have an oil drain port, you have a sight glass, an on off button, and a ball valve to isolate the pump. There is not a gas ballast on this pump, though I confirmed it is two stage. The other funny thing I noticed that I couldn't find it directly was an exhaust port. So I have to imagine that somewhere in these louvers or maybe right here, you've got your exhaust happening, but it's super light. I think it's eight pounds, roughly eight pounds. And it's really a like, it's really one of those things you've got to just hold in person to realize how ridiculously small and light this thing is. It came in a nice carrying case that can accommodate the pump, the charger, and uh, two batteries at least. You could throw a couple core tools in there if you wanted and you'd be good to go. So anyways, I thought this job at the Sunroof Factory was a perfect opportunity to test this thing out because of the fact it was four ton. And four to five ton-ish is when you're kind of getting to that upper limit of what you'll see in residential environments. So instead of just testing this thing on a recovery machine or something like that, we're gonna get to see how it acted on a larger end system that you may find in a home. I'll also note we did not replace the line sets for this job, the customer didn't wanna pay for that. So we are using the old line sets and that's what we'll be evacuating. We'll be evacuating that line set as well as the indoor unit. The suction line on this equipment is inch and an eighth. So you've got a larger volume as well there to put this thing to the test. You've got inch and an eighth line set about 27 feet long. So not an incredibly long run but a pretty average or standard length of pipe. But I'm sure you guys are sick of hearing me blabbing. You just want to see something happen. So here's a little montage of what happened, how it went down, how quickly it happened, and was it good or bad? Well, see for yourself.
heck did we just see? I got back to the house to start editing this video and I realized there's hardly even any footage of what happened itself because it happened so quickly. So what you saw, and I'm gonna pull up the screenshot of the Measure Quick final report of the evacuation was a 17 minute start to finish process. So that included our first, our, our rough in vacuum, our mid stage and our deep vacuum, as well as the decay portion of seeing what our rise was after we valved and isolated the pump from the system. Measure Quick has an algorithm built into the software that actually monitors the rate of micron rise and can extrapolate from that what the decay will be in a longer duration of time without you actually having to sit through it. So after analyzing for about a minute, it came out and it told me that we had a decay rate of eight minutes and 33 seconds and we raised an average of one tenth of one micron per minute. It said that a one micron raise per minute is probably the high end of what's an acceptable decay. So we had a good tight clean system. This was ironclad proof to me as the technician that did it in person that the pump size is of little matter compared to the proper setup when it comes to the diameter of the hoses you're using and removing restrictions like your valve cores, et cetera, not pulling through a manifold. We used a two CFM pump with three quarter inch inner diameter hoses and we easily matched the speed that that would have taken somebody with an eight CFM pump with quarter inch hoses, say for example, or going through a manifold. To me, and I said this to myself that morning, even if this was a brand break even experiment with time. Like it did, it matched exactly what would a five, six, seven, eight CFM pump could do. To me, this is still a huge deal and a massive win for the industry to have a product like this because of the convenience factor. To not have to find power, not even have that be an issue. Now you're not dragging extension cords, you're not dragging out GFCIs, you're not dragging out your widow makers. On a side note too, I got to finish up that job using Navex wireless refrigerant scale. It was a pleasure to use. I have an old antique one in a black briefcase that I've had for years and it's always served me well. But man, was this a nice jump in luxury having something like this with the nice hidden compartment for the controller that pops right out, it's spring loaded. Now I didn't have to use this feature for this install but I thought I'd do it just to demonstrate the process. Navex does give you the ability to program your way in charge if you need to do so. You can put that in there, you can hit enter, and it actually gives you an audible alarm when you're approaching and reach that magic number. So in this case, I used the manufacturer's literature to determine the additional charge I needed to add beyond the factory charge to compensate for the additional length of line set we had. It came out to eight and a half ounces. Probably didn't need to use this feature for that, but again, I just wanted to show how it was done. And it worked perfectly. I mean, I only had to open the valve for a few seconds, but sure enough, the audible tone sounded and I knew that I was good to go. The Navac two, the Navac NP, the Navac NP2 DLM, again, is due sometime early next year, which means really just a couple of weeks from now. And I would recommend picking up an extra battery. Yes, we did that pull down in 17 minutes. I don't anticipate that being everybody's experience every time. It just makes sense if you're going battery to have a spare with you just with anything else that's battery operated. The wireless Navac scale, the Navac core tool I use, and the True Blue evacuation hose kit that I used in the video as well, all that is right now available at True Tech Tools. Of course, that is our best source as an industry for getting the best tools and best support for those tools. So I would really encourage you guys to utilize that asset that we have. And with that, guys, thanks so much again for watching. Appreciate it as always. Stay safe out there. Click that subscribe button if you're not already. And we'll see you on the next one.